Hey everyone, it's Sean. So, this is part three of our time travel series. Uh, in part one, we talked about the fixed timeline and the dynamic timeline. And then in part uh, two, last episode, we talked about the multiverse theory. Um, and I got some really good comments about that one uh, because lots of people watch the Loki TV show from Marvel and how that explores the idea of this multiverse as well. So today we're going to look at some other types of time travel which are used in uh, films and TV shows, but are they really types of time travel? Well, let's find out. Let's go. Okay, so one of the first things that I just want to quickly touch upon, which is technically time travel, um, it's what we call astral time travel. Astral is A-S-T-R-A-L. Now, astral time travel is a little bit different because this is when the consciousness or the mind, uh, consciousness is C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S-N-E-S-S. -S -S. So the consciousness is your, your mind, your brain. Uh, the consciousness travels back in time, but you're still in the same body. So you're kind of stuck in this uh, time loop um, and traveling through time, but experiencing them uh, in real time. And then when you reach this point at the end, so for example, the, the end of the day or the end of the week, your consciousness gets sent back in time to relive that period again and again. Uh, a good example of this is the movie Groundhog Day with uh, Bull, uh, Bill Murray, and he gets to relive the same day again and again and again. And it doesn't matter what he does, because even if he uh, does something terrible, he just resets and then wakes up in his bed the next day. Um, a similar movie was The Edge of Tomorrow in Japan, I think it had a different name, uh, All You Need Is Kill, with uh, Tom Cruise. Um, this is actually one of my favorite astral time travel movies, um, because it's actually based on the Japanese manga, uh, All You Need Is Kill, and they adapted it into a movie really well, I think. They, they didn't change too many things, so the, the concept of the consciousness being sent back in time again and again works really well. And in that movie and that manga it's really interesting because Tom Cruise is a soldier uh, and he starts off like a like a rookie uh, r-o-o-k-i-e a rookie is somebody with no experience and in his first battle he dies that's not a spoiler by the way that happens right at the start of the movie um, and he dies like right at the start but then he suddenly wakes up like it's like a snap and he wakes up in his bed, like, what? I'm, I'm back here in my bed? Again? And then he experiences the whole day going off to war, fighting in the battle, dying in the battle, and then, again, he wakes up in his bed. And what he does is, every time he goes to battle, he learns the moves of the enemies, and he knows what's going to happen, he knows where they're going to be, so he knows where to attack. But... To the people around him, he looks like this super experienced soldier because he knows exactly where to go and what to do and where to shoot. And to other people, it looks insane. But to him, he's just reliving the same day again and again. Um, I quite like that type of time travel. But is it is it technically time travel if it's just your mind that jumps back? Hmm. What do you guys think? Let me know. So that's astral time travel. A-S-T-R-A-L time travel. So in this episode, I also wanted to look at the reality of time travel because it's good fun to think about time travel in the movies and, and TV shows or whatever. But is time travel really possible? And the only thing that we can say is that no scientists can agree if it is possible or not. Um, so, for example, Albert Einstein, he had a theory of relativity. 
Uh, relativity is R E L A T I V I T Y. Uh, relativity means that it is um, from your perspective, how you see or experience something. So he said that time is relative. So let's say, for example, okay, here's a good example. If you if you make a, a fist now, if you if you close your fist, okay, and we imagine uh, that is the Earth, okay. And now if we take a string with a ball on the end of it, okay, and we have maybe a two-inch uh, piece of string, okay, and we start to spin that piece of string with the ball around it. Now, that is going to travel around your hand very, very quickly, right? It's going to be like one, two, three, four, five, six, like that, right? But if we extend that string and we make it... I don't know, uh, two meters long, okay? Now when we swing it, it's going to be like one, two, three, like that. So your fist is you, basically, and the uh, swinging of the ball is kind of the relative point of time. So a good example of this, if you've seen the movie Interstellar, uh, Interstellar is I-N-T-E-R-S-T-E-L-L-A-R. And this movie explores a lot about um, time travel. And there is uh, one scene in particular where the astronauts uh, have to visit a planet. And the planet is very, very close to uh, a black hole, which is kind of you know sucking all of the, the time and space and everything. So if we imagine uh, that planet as being the ball very, very close to your fists, we were spinning it around very, very quickly. And then we imagine the uh, ball on the long piece of string uh, swinging very, very slowly is Earth, okay? When the astronauts go down to that planet, for them, it feels like they are only on that planet for 30 minutes, because for them, time is just moving at a regular speed. But back on Earth, time is moving um, uh, much quicker for them. So with that plot point, uh, that's called time dilation. So time dilation is uh, D-I-L-A-T-O-N. And this is the difference between time passing in two different locations. So the astronauts are very close to the black hole. So for them, time is moving uh, at a slower rate than their families back home on Earth. So in that movie, when they get back to uh, their uh, spaceship their crew and their friends have all aged by like 30 years. But for them, it's only been 30 minutes on that planet. So time has changed because of the distance. So that's what Einstein meant when he said that time is relative. Because the idea is that your perception of time is dependent on how fast you're going or how close you are to an object. So you've got two things happening there. You've got speed and uh, light and the distance. That's a little bit confusing, but that's how time travel works in real life. That is the type of time travel. Um, one of my students actually told me uh, an interesting Japanese fairy tale, uh, Urashima Taro. Uh, I'd, I'd never heard this this fairy tale before, but apparently it's very popular. And it's about a fisherman who rescues a turtle and then uh, he travels under the sea and he meets a princess, uh, Otohime, and his reward is that he spends uh, like a couple of days with the princess, like having fun. And to him, it's only been like a, a week or so. But then when he returns to his home village, he finds out that he's actually been gone for a hundred years. Uh, and then 
he opens the jewelry box uh, gift that was given to him by uh, Otohime, uh, and then he suddenly turns into a hundred year old man. So it's kind of connected to、uh, that kind of concept of time being relative, but I thought that was quite an interesting story. But on the other hand,、um, the physicist Stephen Hawking.、Uh, He was very into time travel and, and、uh, black holes and, and the universe. And his argument was actually that time travel is not possible. Now, his theory was more simple because he said that because there is an absence of present day time travelers, that means there is no time travel, <laughs> which kind of makes sense, right? You know, have you ever met a time traveler? Um, no, so that means that time travel is not possible because Stephen Hawking did a presentation、uh, once where he stood on the stage and he said, If there is such thing as time travel, please appear at this point in time now on this stage next to me so that we can prove that time travel exists. And nothing happened, so he said, That is proof that time travel doesn't exist. <laughs> Which is pretty smart.、Uh, a lot more basic than、uh, Einstein's theory, right? And there's also there's another argument that you wouldn't be able to jump to a specific place or point in time because time is a man made concept, right? We made time. So if we say, I want to jump to、uh, June 14th, 1965. How do we calculate that point? How do we get to that point? Because, you know, space and time d o e s n t understand what June 15th, 1965 is. So we would have to find some other way to calculate how to arrive at that exact space and time. It's really confusing. And that would also be impossible because. Gravity is always changing the distance of the planets and things. So, for example, the place that you are sitting in right now is going to be different a hundred years from now because the, the Earth is you know, always moving because of gravity. So, if you try to time travel to that exact spot that you are sitting in now, You'd probably end up in space somewhere, <laughs> floating around in space because that point in Earth, on Earth has moved, right? Or it could be that that place that you're sitting in now has been destroyed and now it's underground. So you would just appear in the ground somewhere, <laughs> which is kind of scary.、Um, so, I mean, all of these ideas kind of disprove the idea that time travel could be possible. So, I guess for now, we just have to think about time travel as a sci fi thing, science fiction story plot for movies and books. So, what did you think about the time travel episodes?、Uh, a little bit confusing, I know, but hopefully, you've managed to stay with me. I tried to keep it as basic as possible.、Um, so, how about you guys? If you could time travel into the future or the past, What would you do?、Uh, would you tell people about natural disasters or buy a lottery ticket or would you like to see how you die and prevent that from happening? Or what would you do? Let me know.、Um, and what do you think about the time travel theories? Which is your favourite?、Um, make sure you send me a message on Instagram. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram,、uh, Sean Bradley 1986, S E A N B R A D L E Y 1986.、Um, or you can follow the uh, Daihon Nashi uh, Eikaiwa uh, official Instagram, or of course, message Sota as well.、Uh, I'll put all of the links in the description for the podcasts. So take care. Don't time travel. Don't change anything. <laughs>、uh, see you guys soon. Bye bye.